Welcome back everyone. We're just south of Dawson City in the Yukon Territories of Canada and uh, there's a new version of Android Auto just released and it's about time to do an update on that. So let's jump inside and I'll give you a tour of what and why. Okay, so this is my Android Auto DIY head unit I built. Uh, I did videos of this in the spring of 2018 showing exactly how I built it, how to wire everything up, and the code you need to run to install and build the Open Auto open source version. And since then, I really haven't done too much to it. It's running great. I plug in my phone and I get GPS, turn-by-turn -turn navigation and music and all the OK Google stuff working splendidly. So there have been updates and, and the open source version has had some improvements, but I haven't really found the need. Uh, like I said, it just works and so I just leave it alone. One thing I did do is I 3D printed this enclosure to hold the, uh, the screen and the pie that replaced the plywood box I'd built as a prototype. And as you can see, it looks nice and contoured, much like the rest of the style of the dash. So I think that looks good. But it's now fall 2019. There's a new version of Android Auto and Google Play services has been updated. So that kind of broke this installation. As you can see here, my touch screen is working. The screen is registering the touches. But when we go inside of uh, Android Auto here, now you can see I don't have any touch control at all. It just doesn't register the touches. And I can kind of get by by touching on my phone screen and getting it back to Google Maps so it shows that. But there is a new version of uh, Open Auto, and it's a uh, pre-configured image. You just flash it to an SD card, pop it in, and it has uh, much more capabilities than the vanilla Android Auto. You can run standalone music apps, Kodi, YouTube, and that sort of stuff, which I don't really have a need for, but the uh, the updated Android Auto would be very nice, and the touch to work would be really great. So let's tear into this and uh, get the SD card out and go flash it here. Okay, so the way I designed this uh, dash pod thing is it's just these four screws, two on each side. there and then this just slides out like this i haven't been inside there in a long time all right so there's the sd card i'll just set that in there for a bit all right so i've got the sd card uh, that the original installation was on i'm going to keep this aside just in case anything doesn't work out well but uh, let's go inside now and i'll show you how to flash the sd card super easy. Okay, inside of the laptop now, uh, I downloaded the image file from Blue Wave onto my phone just because it was handy uh, with the link they provided and I was downloading over cellular anyway, so may as well use that. So I've connected it to the laptop. I'll just retrieve the image file and also the uh, user guide here, put that on my desktop. And then I've got an unused SanDisk Industrial uh, 8 gig card that I got with something. It's too small for camera work or anything, so I'm going to use that. Uh, plug that in there. And then to burn the image to the USB disk, uh, I use uh, the Linux Live USB Creator. It's a handy little deal. You just choose the key you want to burn to. And then, uh, as you can see, it's got this option to download one of many uh, Linux distros, various flavors. But we're just going to use the manual mode choose this uh, ISO file or image file in this case and then you just click the little lightning to start the installation it doesn't matter which uh, burn tool you use there's many of them out there I'll put some links to a couple others in the description um, but yeah once it's done here we just take this SD card and let's go back to the dash and plug it in try it out so I brought this whole thing in here just because it's going to be easier to film and uh, and so let's pop that new SD card in there. 
Okay, so it boots up, gives you the terms of service, and don't use this while driving, etc., etc. And then, uh, with your purchase, you get an email uh, with the serial number for uh, for your purchase. Okay, so just like that, we're into the Open Auto system. Uh, it comes pre-installed with some applications, as you can see, and uh, of course the settings I'm going to need to adjust somewhat, but. 12 hours is my preference. So it's got a bunch of options there for if you want to show the top bar, this uh, title bar at the top over your Android Auto and Open Auto. I do not. So something I just noticed uh, is the way these uh, connectors are on the back. This is how the screen is installed in my vehicle. And as you can clearly see, it's upside down. So, that's easy enough to fix. Uh, you just need to go into... Quit that, yep, cancel that. Okay, so get yourself a terminal window open and sudo nano boot slash config.txt. And right here at the top of this file, you can just add the line lcd underscore rotate equals two. Control X to save. Yes, enter. And then sudo reboot. And this should reboot now right side up. As you can see, it's now the right way around. Okay, so as you can see, it's loading uh, directly into Raspbian and then uh, boots straight into the uh, Open Auto Pro. And, uh, you know, I didn't really value this uh, <laughs> when I started this project this, this weekend. Um, you know, all these settings seem fancy and nice, but once they're set, they're set. So I didn't really... Uh, care about it but having the uh, the different uh, video resolutions and screen DPI options easily available to you here is really nice uh, I'm not using the A2DP or mirroring or anything like that yet but having these uh, the the option to have some other apps in here is going to is going to be nice uh, the things that I think are super handy is the uh, day night settings you can now have them uh, controlled via GPIO, so you could use my same optocoupler method to uh, sense the headlights and then turn the uh, day-night on, but he's also got provisions here for time-based, for sunrise, sunset, or sensor-based, so if you have a uh, one-wire light sensor, you could use that too, or, or manual, which is probably what I'll stick to. So that's the uh, back end. It will play music and and uh, Bluetooth music from your phone if you don't want to connect it. But I do, so I'm going to put my phone in the holster here and it should automatically launch Android Auto. And the new Android Auto supports playing music where you left off, which is a really nice function. So this is the new 2019 Android Auto. I'm going to pause this for the sake of clarity. So as you can see, the map, uh, it now has the uh, music controls right here at the bottom of the screen, which is nice because in the old uh, Android Auto, you needed to switch between maps and music just to pause or play the next track. So that's pretty slick. There's a dedicated button there. Get me directions to Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek is 19 hours and 47 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. So there you go, that's that map to there. Uh, the voice stuff is, is all very similar to what it was before. One thing I thought that was kind of neat is if you're in here and you search for Google Maps and, and you uh, go to type a destination, it throws an on-screen keyboard there, but 
also down here on my phone you can probably see there's a keyboard there too which is kind of handy but that's just uh, that's that so and then of course the home button is kind of new and different uh, you've got some other apps in there uh, podcasts and so on so that's handy and then the thing I thought was kind of neat that I didn't really didn't set in before just unplug my phone there is you can control it over Wi-Fi or rather have the Android Auto stream through Wi-Fi now you do need to enter the IP address so that's the IP address of my phone and you do need to go into Android Auto settings and turn on the head unit server so once that's done there we go so you can see my phone is not connected via cable yet it's still still working now in the few minutes of testing that I've done I've noticed it's a little bit kludgy some things are slow or it seems slow like there's some like right there a little laggy maybe can't really tell too early to tell um, but to have the wireless option is nice uh, I don't think it is something I'm going to be using just because I have this uh, holster down here so I have this holster here that I uh, keep my phone in while I'm driving and that way I can uh, use Torque which is a great app I use for OBD2 monitoring uh, of various gauges and statistics of the vehicle so my phone's always there and we're generally on fairly long trips two or three or four hours when we're going someplace so uh, the battery on the phone is going to get depleted just from data usage or whatever so it's nice to have it plugged in anyway and so I'm gonna have it plugged in not using the Wi-Fi but it's nice that there's an option for that okay guys that's going to be it for this time this was a super super easy install uh, just download the image file flash it to an SD card and pop it in your existing open auto installation uh, if you haven't seen my first two videos on the open auto install uh, I will link those below and also put a card up here uh, you can check that out and uh, thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time